Praise the Lord. Midweek recharge. How many of you came in recharged tonight? Or you came in ready to be recharged? Or a combination of both? Well, it's a joy to have you here tonight. Sister Stacy got called into work, so Pastor says for me to begin at 6.30 tonight. So that's what we're going to do. Just a joy to have you here Wednesday after Wednesday as we study the Word of God together. And tonight I'm going to finish up our time together on this journey into life or this journey of life. And uh, I'm going to be in Romans chapter 16 and we're going to talk about Paul's life and some of the things that he mentions there that I think is so appropriate in this journey of life. And I'm going to talk about two words. This is our thought tonight, journey mates. Who are you doing life together with? Who are your friends? Who are your journey mates on this journey as believers? It's an exciting journey, and I want us to just explore this tonight. I believe that it will be a source of encouragement as we continue to live for the Lord day after day after day. Father, we just come into your presence with thanksgiving. We are thankful that we are able to come together here at Midweek Recharge and study the Word of God, be strengthened by the fellowship, by your word, by presence of Holy Spirit. And Lord, we have come here by choice and by Holy Spirit's design. Lord, we are so thankful that in days like this, we turn to thus saith the word of God. We find ourselves in strategic times and we must be strategic people. We must be that strategic regional church for this hour in which we live. We thank you for the responsibilities that you have placed upon this ministries and the ministries represented here. Lord, quicken our hearts to receive your word tonight. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Just give you a quick update. I shared it on my Facebook page just a uh, a few minutes ago, but uh, Pastor Ron just got back from uh, Belize a Saturday, and while there, they were doing work on the resource center they're putting together there in the building that we bought there, but also they had a doctor and his team from Florida come, and they took the medical clinic, mobile medical clinic out, and in two days, they served 700 people and they were up in Orange Walk and they dealt with the cane workers uh, uh, community. There's a tremendous sugar cane fields there and they have a, a large part of their economy there in that part of Belize. And uh, they, they ministered to 700 of them, done medical clinic uh, to them. A mother came in with a little baby, two or three weeks old. And they said she's very sick. They thought she had uh, pneumonia or something, but they, they took the baby in. The doctor said there's something seriously wrong. They done a, he connected with his wife, who's a surgeon in Florida, and they'd done an evaluation by video and while they were doing that, the baby died. And uh, they started doing CPR and life uh, giving techniques. After about 15 minutes, he came back to life. And God touched that child. You were part of that. People were so moved. 
and the doctors got the baby in his arms. You never know. what one offering or one gift of a fifth wheel mobile or tremendous tool that God gave through this ministry and look what God has done. Every time they take that thing out for a couple days, 700 people are ministered to. Think about that. God is so good and he's faithful. This is when we are very strategic. And you never know. You might say, Brother Russell, what I do is so little, but little is much when God is in it. So I thought that would give you a, a, a word of encouragement that our work, our works are never in vain. God is good and God is so faithful. All right, in Romans chapter 16, we, I want to ask you this question tonight. What is the journey of our life? I don't know about you, but I don't like to think about it. I don't like to think about it. But here we have arrived at our final chapter. on his journey into life that he has numerous friends. As I was studying this and thinking about it, I thought, you know, I had thought of this before. I thought of Paul in his life here in chapter 16, but he goes through this chapter and he starts listing all of these people that he knows. He starts listing people that have been special to him in his journey as a apostle as a missionary and and when you consider that the apostle had never been to the church at Rome but he when he gets there he's greeting an extraordinary number of people and they're people that are not common he's met them years back and he met them on his mission in his establishment of churches. And as he traveled, as I was looking at this, Paul, as an apostle, was a people person. He loved people. You, we remember his story when his name was Saul. He was a wicked fellow. I mean, he was a Pharisee of the strict sect. And he was a rabbi, he was an intellectual, and he was going and capturing and arresting Christians and putting him in jail, prison, and standing at the death of some. But yet one day he met the master on the road, and his life was forever changed, and he became a man sold out to God. There's one thing that is clear. Paul had a heart for people. And God expects you and I as believers to have a heart for people. Friends make the journey more fun. I don't know about you. I've had in these 50 some years of being in leadership, I, I'm thankful that Don and I have many, many friends but our friends have made the journey more fun. Amen. Oh, for your information, fun is not sin. <laughs> We're to experience fun. We're to experience joy. And it's not always joy. But friends make us experience joy. In chapter 16, verse 1 and 2, Paul says, I commend to you Phoebe, our sister, who is a servant of the church. And he said, 
that you may receive her in the Lord in a manner worthy of the saints. I w as I was looking at this, I found this story that I think is so beautiful. In the Walker Art Gallery in Liverpool, Liverpool England, hangs Pointner's magnificent picture, Faithful Unto Death. The painting depicts a Roman guard on duty while the palace behind him is destroyed by the eruption of Mount Vernius. And the dead are all around him. But this guard, this Roman guard, in the midst of all of the chaos, is standing at his duty station and he refuses to move. And he stands there, and he dies there. Faithful, faithful unto death, he was. And the statue there, the, the painting there, is inscripted with those words, faithful unto death. All of us in this room tonight need to have friends that will be faithful unto death. We need that. We need to know that we have friends that when we call upon them, they will be there. There is nothing like friends. Paul had many, many friends. How rare we find such dependable friends. And when we have those dependable friends, they are a tremendous treasure. In my opinion, as a pastor, as a leader, I feel that our greatest friendships should be in the family of faith. Most of my friends are in the family of faith, but I also have many friends that are out there in the world, but we're friends. I have friends from high school. There's a few of us still left. And, 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 and we see each other and we, we, we reminisce and we talk about our days in school. And uh, there, there's some guys that I was in the Navy with that occasionally I meet one of them. And uh, we've been friends all of these years. But Paul's friend that he mentions here in the first part of this chapter was that kind of person. She was dependable. Paul had women friends. He had men friends. Why? Because he was a lover of people. And... Uh, when I was looking at the life of this woman, some of the characteristics that she has concerning her de dependability, her love for Paul, her serving of Paul, one thing that she had, she was a woman with a servant's heart, a servant's heart. In verse 1, Paul tells the Christians at Rome, I commend to you our sister who is a servant of the church. Praise God. Sunday, this coming Sunday, they start camp meeting and family camp in Kokomo. And uh, they're all excited. They've got the tent up. They've got the staff together. They've got it all planned out for the week. And, and they still have me in the... Uh, leadership group they just got me there so I know what's going on and I can stay informed and, 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 and I can make comments into that group 
And uh, when they started the group this year for this year's camp, I just put in there, I'm, I'm praying for all of you that it'll be a tremendous camp. And we got a new camp leader and so forth, and it's, it, it's going to be an exciting time. And last week they had to cut off registration because they were more than full. So it's exciting. And, uh, but there will be those people gathering there that have gathered there for the last several decades, some of them up in years now. But they always show up. And you'll find them sitting around in the tent reminiscing about what God has done in the past. But also talking about what God's going to do next week. But it is a group of friends that is ever expanding. When Don and I went, we went and were their pastor and, 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 and invested our lives into that ministry and there was a lot of changes made there was a lot of shake up and things that took place that had to happen but it wasn't detrimental to us or to them because love was expressed in such a manner that friendships were made that will last into heaven and when we get there, we'll talk about some of the things that we experienced here. The goodness and greatness of God that comes through our friendships. Those that have that servant's heart. Not only did she have a servant's heart, she had a courageous heart. I love people that have a courageous heart. I got a, a dear friend He's a pastor over in Ohio, and uh, I love Brother Aaron Turner. He's one of the greatest Bible teachers, preachers, expositors that I've ever known. He's a younger man, so well-versed and eloquent. And I've told him for years, you should be on the national stage. But... He likes to play it safe. <laughs> he, 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 you know, he's a tremendous man of faith, but he, he, he doesn't, you know, he, he has to, everything has to be just in place for him to move. And uh, some of my friends were with him recently. They were talking about doing more for God. And this is what he said, and it got back to me, and it, it made my heart speed up. He said, he said, what I need is a big dose of Phil Russell right now. <laughs> I took that as a compliment. Praise God. Sometimes you just got to do it. And you have to have a courageous heart. Amen. And, 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 and our courage will take us places. And also people with courageous hearts find a place for their friendships to expand and enlarge because courageous hearts come together. I mean, courageous people stand together and we as believers need to be those people with courageous hearts that move forward in the things of God. The Christians at Rome are admonished to receive her in the Lord in a manner worthy of saints. Praise God. We're saints, excuse me, we're saints of God. And we're worthy of being honored as saints. And we are to assist. Paul said, assist her in whatever business she has need of you. She, assist her. How many of us are our friendships so authentic? And so real that we could come together, uh, meet with one another and say, would you assist brother or sister? Are we that close as friends in the faith that we could say, could you assist sister or brother? Paul says of this dear sister, whatever she needs assistance in. 
helper. That's friends. That's the body of Christ. And not only did she have a servant's heart, a courageous heart, but she had a generous heart. A generous heart. The fact that this sister was able to make such a trip indicated that she was a woman of means. She was able to travel. When you become a person of means, as a believer, you become generous. You become generous. And the more generous you are, the more God permits you to be more generous. God loves generous people. Paul says of this dear sister, for indeed she has been a helper of many and of myself also. Paul is giving credit where credit is due. And he is saying to her and saying about her, this dear lady has been a helper of many. Friends who freely give of themselves in addition to their wealth and their means are truly expressing their dependability. Every pastor, every leader of ministry and uh, pastoring a church always has this small group that are always depending. No matter what the situation is, no matter what the circumstances are, are there challenges, or even in the overflow, there's always that group that are known to be dependable. I think it would be worthy goal of each of us in these days in which we live to be known as a dependable person in the body of Christ. With all that's going on in our world today, we're going to need the dependability of you, every one of you, more so than we ever have in the days ahead. I'm not one that is a prophet of doom and gloom. I believe that in the worst of circumstances, the church of Jesus Christ is going to thrive. And even when an economy could fail or fall, or there could be tremendous chaotic upheavals of all sorts, there will always be a form of currency, a form of government, a form of politics. There will always be a functioning element of some sort. And the body of Christ will be filled with such Holy Spirit wisdom, we will know what to do. We will never be, listen, we will never be without leadership because Holy Spirit lives within us. And God will always have men and women that will be in leadership in such a form that you will know that they are your friends because they have a servant's heart, they have a courageous heart, and they are generous hearts. I love that. Paul then goes into a little more of this chapter and he talks about ministry friends. And in verse 3 through 16, he lists there, you can read that uh, chapter, and in verse 3 through 16, he just gives a whole list of names that are his friends. And I was looking at this a few years ago when I was doing a study study on and presenting some leadership material and there was a study done by researchers at Ohio State University Medical School and it revealed that 
fellowship with friends can actually improve your health. They've done an extensive study. And, and they said that when you have friends, it, it, it causes your immune system to protect your body more. I think it's just knowing that you know that you know somebody's with you. <laughs> Amen. That's comforting. Praise the Lord. To know that somebody is your friend. And what greater place, what better place than our greatest friendships to be right here in the house of God. And Paul gives us some advice here in this chapter. And as I was looking through this, he instinctively knew that his friends were good for him. I have to make a confession here tonight publicly, and I'll do it publicly. Pastor Ware is good for me. <laughs> really, he's good for me. Praise the Lord. And I could give you a whole list of people that is good for me, and I'm sure you could too. But Paul, in this portion of Scripture, greets and gives 24 names of friends. 24 names in this portion of Scripture. And he, he lists them by name. And in addition to that, he lists five households that he's in friendship with. I remember in my early years of pastoring that uh, I could just show up at somebody's house. <laughs> I mean, just show up, knock on the door, and come on in, pastor. Don't do that no more. People, people, <laughs> the last 20 years, don't you show up without calling. And don't you show up unless I invite you. Good people. Don't show up at my house. I guess, I, I don't know, maybe I catch them sinning or something. <laughs> no, but, I, <laughs> but I don't know. I just, but it, it makes me scratch my head. That's why I'm bald headed. I had a lot of questions. But people, you know, don't, no, don't, don't show up. And then I pastored people. When I first went to Kokomo, there was a, a large family there that, that uh, I went and visited. They asked me to come, and I went and visited. And uh, when I got there, they treated me well. They gave me coffee and some refreshments. And, I, and, and they told me, and they said, Pastor Russell, Bishop Freeman showed up every Saturday morning. I said, okay. We were tied. We were friends. Bishop showed up every Saturday morning. And we had coffee and we and he'd sit around, we'd fellowship. And it kept they kept saying every Saturday morning. I wasn't Bishop Freeman. And I didn't show up every Saturday morning. I wasn't being mean. But there was ministry to do. There were crises every week. And, and, and so, I'll just say that to say this. Friendships are not based on how many times I visit you. Friendships are deeper in the knowledge of knowing that we are the body of Christ fitly joined together. And when there is problems or are problems, we know we're there for each other. But also in moments when there is, there are expressions of joy because we meet on the street or we meet in the sanctuary or we, we meet at a restaurant. was 
Saturday evening. Or when did we go to the Italian restaurant? Sunday. Okay, Sunday. So we took my granddaughter and her two friends to the gallows at Richmond, and 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 uh, we were sitting there and we were having a good time, enjoying our time together. And Donna's brother and uh, his wife and their pastor and another minister was a few tables over, and they were. Ron come over and greeted us, and then when we finished, we went and greeted Pastor and so forth. For, and they were new in Richmond of four or five years ago, and a uh, tremendous young pastor doing a great job. But the highlight of the day was we were sitting there, and here the stooped over 94-year-old lady come over to our table, and she reached out her hand, and she said, Brother Phil, and it was Sister Wyatt, 94 years old. Her husband, Dr. Wyatt, went on to be with the Lord. They were pastoring in Richmond for decades. He was, when I was a young preacher, he took me aside in my first year of preaching, and he imparted to me, and he laid hands on me. And he, he gave me a Bible. He sold me my first book of uh, pulpit commentaries. They cost $1,000 now, but he bought, he had a Christian bookstore and he sold them to me for $99. And it took me a while to pay that $99 <laughs> back in the early days. But he constantly, down through the years, invested in my life. And Sister White comes over and she shakes our hands. And she talked to us. A friend. A godly woman serving God still gets out and drives. That's the kind of friends you want. That's the kind of friends that affect your immune system. <laughs> Think about it. Did you all know you were in such good hands? Did, didn't you know? Do you understand what God has put together in the body of Christ when we understand that we are strategic for this hour and when we learn how to be strategic and we learn the teachings of Apostle Paul and him being a people person, naming these people, these households, and then saying to us, you can be like this. It's a beautiful thing. And this is three things he says and suggests to us about this. Make your friendships intimate. Have close relationships. I've pastored people and they've said, Pastor, I don't want to be close. You're my pastor. You know, you, I just don't want to be close. I'm, I'm going to attend. I don't, I, don't want to, I don't want to be close. Well, if you don't want to be close then you don't want to be close. That's okay. But make your friendships intimate. I like close relationships. We love people. Paul ministered to thousands of people, yet he knew every friend by name. For seven years, John Fawcett had ministered in a small Baptist church in Waynesgate, England. Then he got the call to serve the large, prestigious Carter Lane Church in London. Fawcett accepted. He loaded his possessions on the wagon, but that was as far as he got. The friendships were too deep. The relationships were too intimate for him to leave. He unloaded his wagon and he served that congregation 44 more years. This is what we need. This is how we're to be. 
people say to me, Pastor Russ, when are you going to retire? When are you going to slow down? I'm not. There's too many settings like this that are yet to be. There's too many Sunday mornings like we had Sunday morning that are yet to be. I want you to, I want you to, I want you to get what I'm saying tonight. The most important position for Pastor Ware is being up here, being our senior pastor, cast in vision, serving, imparting to us and our leadership team. My most important position in this ministry is, is not as a bishop or as director of Global Awakening, but right now my most important position right here. When pastor says prayer partners come and we come and as they come Sunday and they just kept coming and we pray individually for them. And did you know it's here that I have made some friends in this body that I would never have made before your place of duty, your place of responsibility in this local body is where friendships are made, where they're cultivated, where they grow, where they mature, and where you become more effective for God than you've ever been. And it's in this journey, and it's about having journey mates. I mean, having people with you and knowing that they are with you. Make your friendships intimate. And, and that pastor that went on and stayed there 44 more years, it wasn't, it wasn't 44, it was 54 more years, and he wrote that him, blessed be the tie that binds one of the most powerful hymns of the church of yesteryear. But after spending all of those years, those decades, faithfully serving that congregation, then God gave him that hymn, Blessed be the tie that binds. Friendships that bind us together. I've pastored churches in the past where there was no intimacy. I'll just leave that there. There's no life there. You're just a number on your tithing envelope. That's not the way God planned it. God planned for us to be together. So make your friendships intimate. Secondly, make your friendships broad. When you read through the list of the names that Paul gives us, there's some Greek names, there's some Hebrew names, there's uh, some names from other different countries and different groups. And he even mentioned some names. He said they were of Christ before me. They knew Christ before I knew Christ. And he gives us their names. And there's this whole list and there's this broad spectrum of friendships. Both men and women And that was very unusual because Paul was a rabbi 
he once was, and they were forbidden to have contact with women. It's evident that Paul had quite an assortment of friends. I would that it would be said of me and of you that each of us had quite an assortment of friends. Sometimes we make the mistake of establishing our relationships only with people of like mind. If you just make your relationship some friendships of people of like mind, you're going to end up very, very limited. You're going to end up being dull. <laughs> Amen. I don't want everybody around me. I don't, I don't want everybody around me a carbon copy Christian because they're seldom effective. Each of us are distinctive. Each of us are strategic. And God wants us to enjoy the variety of people, their personalities, their gifts, their calling. We as Christians, and after all of these years, I understand this more than I've ever understood it. There's real benefit in fellowshipping with Christians who differ from us in, in our theology so long as we agree on the essential. We have to have our fundamentals right. But there are some things that there is, is allow, allowable differences. But on the fundamentals, we must be together. But... Uh, and there's need to have friendships with non-Christians. Salt does no good if it stays in the salt shaker. Got to shake it out. So make friendships that are both broad and deep. And then make your friendships real. Make your friendships real. Imitations are really and readily, readily available today everywhere. We have fake jewelry, right? Fake this, fake that. Don't be fake. Be real. Just be real. Paul says, greet one another. Now, stay in your seat. Paul says, greet one another with a holy kiss. Now, that was the culture of that day. And I go to some nations, and they greet me with a holy kiss, the brothers do. I go to some place, they kiss you here, and then they kiss you there. I haven't got accustomed to kissing back. But uh, that's their culture. And uh, that's what Paul did. That's not a common co thing for us here in our Western culture. But a warm handshake, a slap on the back, is the way we say, I care for you. That's the way we express our care, our love. Let's never be deficient in that. Don't wait until your friends are gone to say in a tangible way, I love you. You're special to me. Be a real friend. Take friendship to a new level. 
to a deeper level. Let me sum this up with this tonight, the closing verses of Romans 16. This is good for this day, this hour in which we live. Now I urge you, brethren, note those who cause division and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you learned and avoid them. For those who are such do not serve our Lord Jesus Christ, but their belly, and by smooth words and flattering speech deceive the hearts of the simple. For your obedience has become known to all, therefore I'm glad on your behalf. But I want you to be wise in what is good and simple concerning evil. And the God of peace will crush Satan under your feet shortly. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. God seems to give us one or more friends who challenge our sanctification. I've had my share of them. It may be an ungodly coworker or family member who claims Christ as Savior but whose life doesn't show it. I've got some friends in the world that are professional people, and when I'm with them, they speak the right English. But I've walked on them before, and whoo, I didn't know they talked that way. But they change as many as soon as I come into their and on occasion, they've said, I'm sorry, preacher. Does that mean I love them less? No, I still love them. God puts people in our lives to challenge us, to fine-tune us, to cause us to grow and develop more. But Paul gives us some instruction. And he's, he indicates that how we treat them depends on their problem. It depends on their need. Don't overreact when a friendship becomes difficult. Don't throw it away. Save it. Preserve it. Prevail. Overcome. There's a little lady I met last year. She was a she was something else. little bitty. She didn't weigh 80 pounds. She was a professor at Earlham. She was a fireball, firecracker. Very opinionated. And uh, she told me that she was a conservative Quaker. They didn't have music and so forth. And she asked me what I was. <laughs> I said, I remember my dad taking me to one of your churches. And we sat on that, on those pews, and nobody said anything, nobody moved. 
Finally, somebody moved. I said, I remember as a little boy, that was a very boring church. <laughs> she just laughed. She said, well, you must be Pentecostal. <laughs> I, said, I said, I'm a spirit-filled Christian. I'm a Jesus follower. Oh, you're one of those. Yeah. And, and she could talk eloquent. She was educated. She was, but then if she, if she didn't like something, I mean, she went into the Neverland with her speech and everything else. But there's one thing that I, I found out that she would respond to. She responded to you being a friend. She came in one day and she was she was in a lot of pain. She was bruised. She had fell, and she was really upset. I said to her, "I said, uh, would you like me to pray for you?" She said, "Yeah." And 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 the spirit of prayer was present. I laid hands on that little professor who had, who had just used a whole lot of profanity and she finally got to her senses. And I said, you want me to pray for her? She said, yes, and I prayed for her. I just prayed a simple prayer, but I prayed by the Holy Spirit. And she... prayer. No, friends pray. It'd be easy, hear me, every one of us, it'd be easy for some of us just to wipe off some friendship. It'd be, it, life would be easier if we didn't have them. But God put them in our and it's, it's our responsibility, responsibility to finish our journey well. And, and it's our responsibility to finish our journeys with, with friends, great friends, friends, good friends, friends, even those that are in blatant doctrinal error. error. And, and I've, I've got, got some, some friends, friends that are in blatant doctrinal error. error. I'm not going to wipe, wipe them off. off. <laughs> My, My life, life would be a little easier a couple of them if I... But, but I, I can't. can't. I've, I've been, been friends, friends with, with them, them too long. long. And, and while, while I'm, I'm praying that they will learn the error of their ways, they, they may, may be praying, praying the same thing about, about me. <laughs> so, so I don't want them... Friendship to be lost. I'm going to continue to work on. And then, if we had some friends that are blind, in blind ignorance, our responsibility as a friend is to teach them. Just teach them, share with them, love them, and teach them. And then, if they're in bondage to sin, deliver them. That's what friends do. We deliver them. And, and I, I close, close with, with this, this tonight. tonight. In, In 21, 21 through 24, Paul does something that I think is so important, and, and I'm, I'm so thankful for what Pastor did Sunday morning with our two dear sisters, sisters in the way that he honored them and called them by name and brought, brought them up here for us to pray for them. And then and I saw all, all of you just loving, loving on them. them. As they, As they leave, leave us this, this week. week. Not, Not all friends, friends are created, are created equal. equal. Amen. Amen. They're, they're just, just not, not all created, created equal. equal. 
Elisha, Elisha had, had his sons, sons of, the, of prophets. the prophets. Of all, of all the, the multitudes, multitudes that followed him, Jesus, Jesus had, had his twelve. All of all us have, have our special, special group of friends. friends. We, we have, have servant, servant friends. friends. I thank, I thank God, God for the people, people that, that serve, serve in our, our ministry. ministry. Those, Those who, who serve by, by financing, financing it, by doing, doing all kinds, kinds of other things, other things. Our, our prayer, prayer intercessors. intercessors. Thank, thank God, God for these friends. friends. And then, and then family, family friends. friends. Praise, Praise God. God. Paul, Paul mentions Lucius, Lucius Jason. Jason. He, he said, said they, they are, are my, my kinsmen. kinsmen. At this, this juncture, juncture of my life, life there is there's nothing, nothing as, as special, special as, as my, my family, family being, being my, my friend. friend. My, my grandson, grandson come, come over, over one evening when, when the girls, the girls were, were in Brady. And he's, he's done, done this before, but he's done, done it again, again this week. week. I sit, I sit there in my chair, chair and we talk, talk with, with the girls. girls. And, and here, here he comes, comes and he's just, he's, he's a big, big kid. kid. Yep. Yep. He comes he and sits, sits down, down on my lap. When he was a young kid, he'd come and stay with us. You know, you know he'd, he'd come, come and, and he didn't, he didn't like, like to sleep, sleep by himself, himself, so I'd, I'd get, get out, out of bed, bed and, 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 and go, go in the back, back bedroom, bedroom and I'd take, take Brady in there and, and I'd sleep, sleep with, with him. him. We'd, we'd talk, talk we'd, we'd, you know, you know we'd, we'd dream, dream. He'd, he'd ask, ask questions. questions, you know, and he grew and grew and there's no way he'd do anything like that today, but he will still sit in my lap. You know, you know, he, he thinks, thinks it's, it's funny. funny. He doesn't he realize, realize that my legs, legs are 73 years, years old, old now. now. But, but uh, uh, you know, you know I, 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 I like that. that. You, you like, like those, those kinds of things. Of thing. And that's, and that's the, way the way it should, should be. be. Right? right? That's, that's what, what family, family is all about. about. Family, family friends. friends. Evan, Evan transition. transition. To Montana, to Montana University, University this week, week. and, and uh, uh, he, told he told me a few, few months, months ago. He, he, told he told his mother. mother I don't know what, what he meant, meant by this, but he said, "He said, he said Papa, Papa, you're, you're going to be famous, famous one, one of these days." days. <laughs> you know, you know when, when you've got, got people, people like, like that in your corner, you're going to go somewhere. You're going to succeed. You're going to have friends. Life, Life as, as a believer, believer can, can be, be very beautiful, can be can very, very re rewarding. rewarding. And I just, I just wanted, wanted to let you know tonight, tonight that, that you, you can, can end, end in your, your journey, journey with, with lots, lots of friends, friends. servant, servant friends, friends, family, family friends, friends, gracious friends. friends. There's, there's a bond. bond. There's, there's a bond, bond between, between believers that, that ought to be, to be cultivated, cultivated today, today like, like it's, it's never, never been, been cultivated. cultivated. Let's, Let's stand, stand together. What, what kind, kind of friend, friend are, are you? This, this is, is how he ended. ended. Now, to, now him to him who is able, able to establish you according, according to my gospel, gospel and, the and the preaching, preaching of, of Jesus Christ, Christ according, according to the revelation of the mystery, of the mystery which, which was kept, kept secret, secret since, since the world, world began, began. But, but now, now has been made, made manifest, manifest and by, by the, the prophetic, prophetic scriptures, scriptures has been made known, known to all nations, nations according, 
according, according to, the to the commandment of the everlasting God for obedience to the faith, to God alone wise, be glory through Jesus Christ forever. Amen. Father, tonight, thank you for forgiveness. Thank you for the journey that you have had. Cause each of us to have been marked Thank you through the decades. There have been special friends that have been in a pivotal point of journey, of life, of ministry, of challenge, of issues of all sorts. There have always been this diverse group of, of friends, friends that, that you have put, put into, into our, our lives and they've, they've been, been there for us. My, My prayer, prayer is God, God that they, they would continue, continue to be there and that, that we would be there, there for them. them. That, that we would be there, there for each other. other. That, that we would not understand, understand the power of friendship. The necessity of it. The biblical factors concerning friendship and the example that Paul gives us of what friendship is all about. I pray that our hearts grow strangely warm, acknowledging the fact that there are friends in our lives. Friendships at every different level, of every different kind of gifting and calling that you place in our life. For, for edification, edification for, for correction, correction for, for protection, for, for uplifting, oh God, God, for encouragement of all sorts. Thank, Thank you for, for that, that tonight. Lord, Lord Thank, Thank you that we're able to share, share your word in this manner. Prepare, Prepare our hearts for, for the word that it Coming the next few weeks. As we think about as we prepare, as we continue to be engaged in this biblical spiritual awakening. Thank 
people from pastors and churches church that were there, there ministering in the entirety of all the medical as they, they were there, there in prayer, prayer and praying pray for, for people as they come. come and went. We pray, we pray for, for the hands that are lifted that, that you know each, each need that is represented, represented of the hands that lifted today. Lord, we, we pray, pray for those that, that are going to be baptized. baptized. Follow you in baptism to do as a public, public testimony, testimony to, to the world of their relationship, relationship with you. Be with us as we of this week. Protect, Protect our, our people, people that, that are traveling, traveling vacation, and those that are returning. And Lord, we're going to gather here Sunday, Sunday in a spirit of anticipation and expectancy. Thank you so much.